What's up, YouTube? What's up, Facebook? Hey, tonight's live Q and A. Every Sunday night we come together. You guys can tell I've got a little uh, little sinus head cold going on, but that won't keep us from doing our live Q and A together. I just be maybe a little deeper, maybe a little raspier. Tonight is all about how to average more premium per sale. Uh, one thing I like to do is I like to get you guys involved. Every single week we do the live Q and A. And I like to get feedback from you guys on what to on, on what every Sunday night's live Q&A should be. Well, this one comes from another agent. You know who you are. And he said, hey, I'm averaging about 40, 45 bucks a month in premium. How do I get that up higher? And so we're going to go over three steps to be able to average more premium per sale. What's up, Michael? Best to show them up front the max amount that they can qualify for. Dude, I, I don't hate it. Uh, it's not a part of my steps, but I don't hate it. It's better than, I'll go ahead and share, uh, what's up, Kevin? I'll go ahead and share with you guys my uh, couple of things that I do and a couple of things that I say, uh, a couple of things that I, that I think are important when you are, when you are starting the sale, uh, a lot of agents are doing it wrong. And so tonight we're gonna debunk some of those myths. We're gonna answer you guys' questions and we're gonna cover three simple steps to being able to improve your average premium per sale. I would say a majority of agents will average 40 to 50 bucks a month. And I would say a lot of agents with telesales are averaging 35, 40, 45 bucks a month, which is definitely way too small. What's up, Brian? How do you deal with a prospect that is unrealistic about face value in relationship to cost? At the end of the day, the customer is always right. So you've got to be, a, you've got to be in agree, an agreeable state of mind. This is Brian over here on Facebook. You've got to be in an agreeable state of mind. You've got to remember that, hey, everyone wants as much coverage as they can get for the absolute lowest bottom dollar. So you got to let them know, hey, I'm going to do the absolute best I can. We'll see what you qualify for. I'll give you as much as I possibly can. But at the end of the day, hey, I've got to do what is best for you. I've got to realize, what's up, sales closer? Cody, you are a, you are a freaking real relentless incredible selling beast let's roll let's, if you guys aren't on youtube the comments are flying in on youtube what's up jeremy what's up vince hey great question man at the, at the end of the day uh the customer's always right you've got to realize hey i've got to be an agreeable state of mind i've got to literally ask them questions and, and tell them hey you know what i'm i'm all i'm all with you wanting you know fifty thousand dollars hundred thousand dollars of coverage um, at the end of the day, I want you to realize, hey, I'm an independent agent. I'm a broker. I represent about 170 companies. So if there is something that is possible, I'm if there's any if, if there's anybody on planet Earth that can give you the absolute most amount of coverage for the lowest price possible, Miss Betty, I promise you it's me. You're in the right spot. And we're gonna work together to put something together that'll work for both of us. And especially that'll work for you. Uh What's up, Michael, Kevin, sales closer, Vince, Jeremy, Brian. Today's topic is tonight's topic is all about. You guys can hear I got a little bit of a uh, head cold going on, but hey, dude, when you do live Q and A on Sunday nights, you can't skip it, right? I've got a little. Uh, what they call a medicine ball tea from Starbucks. It's a, a citrus defender, uh, and I love this thing. I've had I've, I've had several of these this weekend. Um, so the three steps that I believe to be able to increase the average premium per sale and Vince Pompanato from North Star will be able to help me out here. Um, the biggest thing is, dude, a lot of agents are saying, hey, average 40, 50 bucks a month. When you average 40, 50 bucks a month in premium, whether you're averaging 500, 600 in premium, you're doing something wrong. And the three steps we're gonna cover are, the relationship is extremely important to you be able to have average bigger sales showing the value and the customer understanding the value is also extremely important in getting your average premium up per sell. And what do I mean by that is, I mean, going through the value, selling the benefits, the features, getting their feedback, asking trial closes, asking questions, getting them in a, in a mentality of choosing and making decisions, make sure they understand the value. If the relationship's not there and if the value's not there, doesn't matter what you do or how you do it. And the third is the way that you ask. One of the biggest no-nos that I hear from agents all the time is, hey, I ask them early on in the presentation um, what they can afford. Uh, there's no reason for that. There's no reason for an agent to ask them, hey, what can you, you know, what are you comfortable spending? 
what, what can you afford? Uh, what do you think you can afford to spend today to take care of these needs to, to, to get yourself into a policy? Most people are going to say like 20, 30, 40 bucks, uh, 50 bucks. You know, I mean, when you ask somebody, it's a rarity that they'll say a hundred dollars. But what, what happens is when you ask, don't ask questions that you don't want the answer to, or that's going to result in a, a stupid answer and it's going to hurt your sale. And the other thing is there's agents that all the time, uh, say, Hey, these, th these plans are going to be affordably priced. They're going to come in at 20, 30, 40 bucks a month, and they're going to be really affordable. That's another huge no, no. There's no reason to get them thinking small. When you start them thinking small in the process, that doesn't help you later on in the close. So there's no reason to bring up price until you're ready for them to make a decision. You want to avoid the price question because without the relationship and without the value, it doesn't matter what price you show them. Uh, they're never going to do it or they're going to be thinking small. T-Mac in the house. What is up, brother? Dude, you're the reason why we're doing this topic. T-Mac out in VA said, hey, dude, I want to average more premium per sale. T-Mac, we were just covering three topics. If you're jumping in on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're on YouTube, give a thumbs up and let's keep the comments and questions rolling. The first step is the relationship. This is why I believe I had a coaching session with an agent from Vegas. Um, it's been a little bit. And one of the things that happened on that coaching session is, hey, he said, he said, Cody, I'm running, you know, tw 20 to 30 appointments a week, man. I'm running a ton of appointments, which was awesome. But the problem was, what's up, John? What's up, JJ? The problem was this agent was, his closing ratio sucked because he was simply trying to grab the low hanging fruit. And so when he was trying to grab the low hanging fruit, he wasn't warming people up. He wasn't taking time to build the relationship and to warm people up. If you want them to believe in you and to end up with a larger sale and a larger policy, then you have to spend adequate time in the warm up phase. The warm up is super, super, super important. The agents that don't spend time in the warm up and they simply try to grab the low hanging fruit, you're gonna end up with a lower closing ratio and you're actually gonna end up with smaller average AP per cell. And so the relationship, I'm talking spending 10, 15, 20 minutes in the initial warm up part. What's up, DC? What's up, Dave? I'm talking spending time in that relationship part because tonight, I think the biggest, the biggest reasons agents, their cells aren't larger and I've averaged there's been there's been there's been weeks where I've averaged uh, almost a thousand bucks to sell out in the a thousand dollars of annual premium out in the field all the time simply because I focused on the relationship, I focused on the value, and I focused on asking the right questions. Sales closer, Cody. What are some main pain points to help the clients to to to, to show them that they have a real problem so we can show what's in it for them. I would say it's the right, it, it's the warm up. It's the right questions in the fact find, the step two of the four step appointment process, the fact find. In the fact find, you've got to ask those tough questions. Not, hey, what can you afford? You know, hey, these, these are affordably priced plans that are gonna be like 20, 30, 40 bucks a month. Don't get them thinking small. I did another coaching session with another agent uh, a few weeks ago that said, hey, that was, he was averaging about $40 a month. And by using these things that we're gonna talk about, he was able to average up his average sell to about eight hundred and forty dollars of annual premium, about seventy bucks a month, simply because he was speeding through the warm up. He was getting out this presentation and telling the client who he was and all about him, and it was all about him and about his license and how long he'd been in the business, about his family and all this stuff. That's fine, but at the end of the day, you're there to help them. The focus should be on the client 100% of the time. What's up, Stephen? And so by putting focus on the client and by not saying, hey, these are affordably priced plans at 20, 30, 40 bucks a month, by not doing stuff like that, there's agents that are being trained to do that stuff at the beginning of an appointment and it is killing your sell. I'll average twice as big of a sell simply because I don't say dumb stuff like that. After a while, you get to know better. 
I was able to train and coach this agent and do a specific, what's up, Sean and Steven and Dave. I was able to, hey, if you're jumping in on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're on YouTube, please keep the comments and questions rolling. Tommy Mack and Sales Calls are here, right? Kevin and Michael, appreciate you guys joining 100%. That's the biggest thing is this agent, when I did this, when I did this coaching session with this agent a few weeks ago, he was averaging 40 bucks a month with final expense life insurance sales. Using these things that we're going to talk about tonight, I was able to take him from 40 bucks a month. And now in July, he averaged 70 bucks a month of final expense sale. That's an increase of $360 per sale of premium. The, the average agent, the average final expense agent, say they do about 100 apps a year, 100 apps a year times 360. It just, just that as an increase, which is incredible, is an extra what an extra four what an extra thirty six thousand dollars of premium. How 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 much would that help you in your business? And how much money how much more money would you make if you averaged an extra thirty six thousand dollars per year over the course of ten years? That agent is going to write an extra four hundred grand of premium simply because we because first thing he said hey. Dude, I need I need to average more premium. I'm averaging forty bucks. It's low. Well, he had been trained by someone in, in in on the East Coast that was teaching him the wrong way to go about running an appointment. Vince Cody agents are selling it to to a client. If a client is looking for a burial or cremation, this is a huge no no. Yeah, I mean you're not there to say hey, you know how little can you pay. This is going to be super affordably priced. Can you afford 20, 30, 40 bucks a month? You're not there to say, hey, do you, do you want to do burial or cremation? No, man. You're there to cover their needs, whether it's final expenses, whether it's debt, whether it's car loans, whether it's a mortgage, whether it's replacing lost income, whatever the case is, even a final expense sale, there's additional money that's available. And one thing that agents forget about is the, well, the biggest thing that agents forget about is they think, hey, it's 2018. It costs an average of 11 grand to bury someone. So, hey, I'm going to propose them $10,000 of coverage. Dude, they may be 63 years old. The average female has got an extra 25 years in her. But in, in, in 25 years, $11,000 isn't even going to cover half of it. What's up, Jimmy Needles? So rather than thinking small and trying to plan for today, let's plan, let's plan for now and let's plan for 25 years from now. Most agents go into an appointment thinking so small that it ends up hurting them. And if you guys are joining, please share this thing out so that everybody can hear my uh, my head cold drinking my hot tea, my medicine ball citrus defender from Starbucks. I appreciate you guys joining. I love doing this every Sunday night with you guys, the little live Q and A. We've been going on. We've been going on six, seven, eight weeks of this in a row. Um, we'll always get a couple couple thousand views in a, in, a, in a couple days from this. And it's all thanks to you guys for, for jumping in and watching this and asking the questions and giving recommended topics that we can talk about. So the biggest thing that we've talked about so far are the no-nos, the things that you do not want to do. Most agents think so small when they're running an appointment. They start the appointment wrong. They start the appointment talking about themselves. They start the appointment making the prospect think small. They, they start the appointment talking about how it's going to be 30, 40 bucks a month or they ask the prospect what they can afford. Dude, no one is ever going to honestly answer that question. What's up, Toby? No one's going to honestly answer that question correctly ever. What's up, Tate? When, if you ask someone and you're in the middle of a sales process or even early in the sales process, you say, hey, what can you afford to spend each and every month on something like this to cover your needs? When there's no relationship, when there's no value, and when they don't when they don't have the full scope of this, they're naturally going to answer that question smaller than they should. Because I can tell you this, you should you should never ask the question. But if you ask the question at the beginning of the appointment versus right before you give them options, they're going to give you a bigger number later on in the process simply because the warm up. And the, and, and the fact finding and the value and the presentation was there. Dude, Jimmy, dude, I say five bucks if I don't have a relationship with you. And if you haven't built any value, Jimmy Needles jumps in on Facebook and said, dude, I say five bucks. Dude, that's like, that's like, that's like a car salesman. 
I hate when they do this and car salesmen, they're wrong for doing this, but that's for another day. What's up, Jennifer? Car salesmen all the time will come up to you and say, hey, you know what? What, what are you, or, or when you're in the middle of the, the sale, after you've chose a car and you test drove it. What's up, Timothy? Car salesmen all the time will say, hey, dude, uh, what do you think you can afford to spend each month? And if I, you know, if someone says 250 bucks a month, oh, I can afford 200 bucks a month. They're going to say, okay, well, we just need to draw this out over seven years to be able to pay for this. Dude, they're doing it wrong. Get them excited. Build the relationship. Get them excited about the vehicle, man. I mean, if, if there's no relationship, if I don't like you as a salesperson and if I don't love the freaking vehicle that you're trying to sell me, I don't care if, if I can afford 250 or 500 bucks or 50 bucks. It doesn't matter. But instead of them asking me, just like agents do, rather than you asking the client, hey, what can you afford financially? And them saying 30, 40 bucks, don't even ask them. Build the relationship, focus on the value, go over those five benefits that we talk about, get an answer after each and every benefit so that they're engaged in the process. Yes, Miss Betty, this comes with a price lock. It's incredible. The price is locked in forever. It'll never go up on you. Unlike a lot of those policies out there where the, where, where the price will go up at, you know, age 70 or 75 or even 80 years old or every year, or every five years, Miss Betty, this price is locked in forever. So you're able to get acknowledgement after each one of these benefits. And then at the end, you're getting them to choose a benefit. Once the relationship's there, once you, once the value's there and they see all the benefits and features, and that you got them engaged in the process, you've got them used to making decisions, then and only then, when you give them three options in descending order that are larger than 40 bucks a month, they're gonna end up choosing something and surprise you. They're gonna end up choosing a bigger option and shock and surprise you simply because you didn't ask them what they could afford, you just assumed that they wanted a really good option and you just assumed that they were going to make a decision because the re relationship and the value were there. What's up, Matthew? What's up, Darren? Darren Rue, the banker's life agent down in Texas. What's up, brother? Hey, if you're jumping in on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're jumping in on YouTube, please keep the thumbs up coming in the comments and questions. We are seeing lightning behind you. This is right, man. If I get carried off, you guys come save me. My dogs will start barking before long. I guarantee it. All right, just come look for me in Springfield. We have we have had tornado watches and warnings going on all uh, all late afternoon and early evening. And as you guys can tell, I've had a head cold all weekend. So the relationship. Spend time in the warm up. Build the relationship. Most of you guys try to grab low hanging fruit. Hey, guess what? Knock knock. They buy you. The product you're selling is irrelevant. The price that you're pitching them is irrelevant. Dude, I, I had an insurance company. I had an insurance carrier get a hold of one of my videos and they reached out to me and they said, hey, what's up, BK? The insurance, I had an insurance carrier reach out to me and they said, hey, dude, we saw your video about how price is irrelevant and we want you to know that, you know, we, we don't necessarily agree with you and that we think that, you know, the, what the price that the client pays is really important. Well, dude, it's important that they're able to afford it and continue to pay for it, but people, people don't buy on price. And I told the insurance carrier that I said, dude, you guys can take the context, the video out of context if you want, but people don't buy based on price. People buy on relationships. I tip more and I spend more money. I even order dessert. If the waitress or the waiter sells me on dessert and ask for me for dessert, guess what? I always order dessert, whether I'm hungry or not. You can ask my wife if they've got cream brulee, something with lemon in it, some strawberries, whatever it is. I order dessert. If the waiter or waitress is good at their job, they sell me on doing it and they ask me which dessert I would like. At the end of the day, I don't, I don't, I, no, nobody goes to, you don't, you don't go into a restaurant based on price. You go, you go to a restaurant based on the, based, based on what the, maybe liking the food. And then once you're there, the waiter or waitress has all, all the bearing on, on how much you enjoy it. You can adjust that if they want the product and truly can't afford your options. 100%. Sales closer says, hey, Cody, uh, are those Medicare leads on fire during AEP? Our Medicare leads at secureagementor.com 
are perfect for Medicare season. They are ridiculous. They really are. That's the relationship part. We talked about the car sales. We talked about the waiters. We talked about you guys doing your job and doing your business. I'm going to ask my wife to get my dog so my dog will quit running around trying to catch this tornado. The relationship. We talked about the relationship. We talked about because, because you have become their broker at that time. That people buy you. They buy the relationship. This is why a relationship is super, super important. You say, Cody, I, my, 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 uh, my persistency sucks. Dude, they probably don't like you. They probably don't love you. They're probably leaving and going, going to somewhere else, someone else. Or maybe you sold the product and then you just ran out the door because you don't care about them, right? You don't care that they love it. You just simply sold it to them, you ran out the door. You didn't try to cool down with them. You didn't try to come off of business. You didn't try to ask those questions before you left. You didn't try to make sure that, hey, dude, they're happy with their decision. It's something they plan on keeping the rest of their life. Do they have any questions? Are, I mean, because you, you want to be their guy. We sell a higher priced Epi product and only sell one carrier, 100% by phone. Price is not a factor if you know what you're doing. <laughs> 100% Vince. Vince is going to be speaking at 8% Nation all about that. There you go. During my fact finding, I ask about cremation or non, and it influences the options I provide at the end. That stops today. Tommy Mack, don't ask. Don't even bring up the word cremation. Don't, don't ask them what they can afford. Don't. Most agents have a bad habit of getting them thinking small. I can run an appointment with any of you on video face-to-face, -face, over the phone, doesn't matter. And I can instantly add at least $250 to $300, maybe even as high as $350 or $400 a year to every single sale that you're making simply because, dude, prospects love me. And I spend time building value. Back when I first got in the business, I used to think that, hey, Dude, exactly. Quote them the same every time, regardless of the situation. 170, 170, 60. Give them three options in descending order. Give them, dude, give them big options. I love that. The fact that most, the problem is most agents think that they're, most agents are scared of giving a hundred dollar option. Dude, I even go as far as giving them three options. Maybe in this example, maybe 180, 60. And then I choose. And let's just say they choose the $60 option. They choose they which eight, about eighty percent of the time they're going to choose the one in the middle. Let's just let's just say they choose the smallest one. Okay, that's fine. Let's just say they choose sixty bucks. I'm also then or you know what? I had an agent the other day made a mistake. They offered them they offered them uh, ten, twelve, and fifteen. Uh, no, 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 no. The agent offered them eight, ten, and twelve. The person picked. What's up, Jose? The prospect picked twelve thousand, and the agent said, "Man, I was thinking too small." They would have picked 15 if I'd have showed them. So I should have showed them. I'm like, dude, if you know it, then go ahead and ask them. You're not going to lose the sale if you say, hey, the $12,000 option is an incredible option. You did really well. But hey, while I'm here, I want to make sure that you're 100% that you love the option that you go with. And I don't, I don't want to leave and you think, hey, was there something else? So I'm going to go ahead and give you another option. It's, it, it's more coverage for your family. It's 15000 and it's only an extra $28 a month. Which of these do you want to stick with the 12000 or do you want to go ahead and, and, and grab the 15000 while I'm here? Who cares? Give them an option. I mean, that, that's, that's, one of the, I mean that's one of the biggest things I've, I've learned is most agents are scared to upsell or offer a secondary option. Dude, you can do it all day and it won't matter. Always show the max of the product. Steven, dude, why not, man? I mean, I'd rather you think big than think small. Most agents end up selling 40, 40, little $40, $50 dollar a month policies because we think too small. What questions do you guys have? We talked about relationship. We talked about the value, the features, the benefits, the value in you, the value in the carrier, the product, the features, the benefits, everything you have to offer. And then the ask, which we're talking about now giving three options in descending order in, you know, 180, 60, whatever, 80, 70, 60, 80, 65, 50, whatever. The biggest thing is quit, quit giving little dinky options. 
and quit asking 20, 30, 40 bucks. Also, quit giving dinky options and quit going from the bottom to the top because they're going to feel like you're trying to take away the lowest priced one. Just give them some big options and expect them to do it. Believe in what you do or, or you won't think big 100% of the time. You guys would give bigger options if you, the reason you don't give bigger options, same reason I almost didn't throw a conference. I put it on my Facebook earlier today. Do it because you don't think you can. Let that sink in for a second. I'm going to put, I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. Do it because you don't think you can. What's up, Heather? Heather, we're, we're talking about averaging more premium per sale. I, I just gave a, uh, I just gave a phrase that I put up on my Facebook earlier this, this morning. One of the reasons I almost didn't throw a conference. One of the reasons why agents ask little dinky 20, 30, $40 sales. One of the reasons why agents don't get big, bigger sales. One of the reasons why a, one of the reasons we don't get a lot of stuff that we want is because we don't do it because you don't think you can. If you're, you're in a spot in your life where you don't feel pushed, you don't feel urged, if there's something you don't like to do or you're scared of doing it, do it because you don't think you can. You've got more in you than you know. I, I, I guarantee it'll surprise you. Do something this week that scares you to death. I guarantee it'll go better than you expected. That's what's crazy. What are the, we've been going about 27 minutes. What other questions do we have about uh, increasing the sale, relationship, value, asking the right questions, asking the right way, using trial closes, doing all these little, doing all these little things. Do it because you don't think you can. You, you, you could go out and average uh, about a thousand bucks a a case. If you thought you could do it because you don't think you can. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying, uh, be, be irresponsible and, and sell the prospect something that they're going to cancel in, in the next month. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, don't, don't sell. Don't another thing. Another big mistake agents make is they try to sell with their own wallet. They try to sell with their own pocketbook, dude, you're not buying this. They are. Don't assume that because you're walking into a apartment complex or a trailer home or a small house or a farmhouse or out in the country, or they have a 68 Chevy pickup that they won't spend 90 bucks a month. Cause I promise you it's more likely that those will than that, than, than, than not their business and buy more leads. It's so true. I did a, uh, I'll even do it this week. I'll do coaching sessions for, for a hundred bucks. You know what? You buy a uh, well, you you buy a premier ticket, you get a free free coaching session anyway. But this week, I'll give eighty percent off of coaching sessions. I'll do coaching sessions for eighty bucks for 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 eighty percent off, hundred bucks, and I promise to increase your your average premium per sale by at least twenty bucks a month. Toby, a lot of younger new agents always sell with their own wallet, dude. I did it. You probably did it when you were a young agent down in Jonesboro, Arkansas. I did it. I used to think, oh crap. I used to be scared to offer something over a hundred bucks a month. What's up, Justin Brock, the Medicare coach, baby. Dude, I used to be, I used to be scared to offer someone a, a, a quote over a hundred dollars a month for final expense or, or life. It used to terrify me. I was a brand new agent. As you can tell, I've got a head cold going on. I've been, I've been under the weather all weekend, but I do it. I got to do my live Q and A with my, with my, with my fam. What's up, Travis? The reason why a lot of agents don't put big premiums is because they themselves are tight on money. Totally. There's agents that, what's up brother? Even, there's agents even I know that, uh, dude, we're, we're, we're going to get you to 8%, man. There's people I know that, even agents in my own office, that they average 40 bucks a month of premium when they, when they sell final expense. And it's because they just, they're going about it the wrong way. They're getting the prospect thinking small. Hey, do you want to do burial or cremation? Oh, yeah. I just want to do cremation. I'll just take 3000 bucks. How much does that cost? Oh, it's $19. Great. Or, hey, I promise to, 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 to the uh, crazy weather. 
Slowly but surely, you offer more and more products and bigger products. Confidence goes up completely. You guys are always capable of a lot more than we realize. The biggest thing is, I said it earlier this morning, do it because you don't think you can. That's the biggest reason I'm throwing this conference. It's for it's yeah, it's for you guys. Yeah, it's you know for this and that, and you know get a lot of attention, bring a lot of value. But I'm gonna do it because I didn't think I could. I told myself I'll I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do it. If you're jumping in on Facebook, please share this thing out. I told myself, hey, I'll, I'll do the uh, I'll throw a conference. You know when I'm, when I'm 30, I'll throw it here in a few years when we've got 10,000 followers. If it's right two years from now, then it's right today. Sales culture says, hey, how do you warm up, warm up a prospect who is standoffish? You got to stroke their ego and you surely got to try. Um, if they rush you along, you can jump into the fact finding portion. Hey, what got you thinking about this? Uh, Heather, you, we got to have you there. I'm interested in going 8% nation. Um, we're going to have some we're going to have some awesome female speakers, too. I don't want you guys to think we won't just because I don't have any yet. We're negotiating with several female speakers behind the scenes. Heather, I. I I want you to go and I want also want you to make sure that we meet all you guys watching. I want you to message me on messenger. I want you to come up, come up and, you know, run through security and get backstage and, and hang out. If I'm walking through the stadium seats, grab me, say, Hey, I'm Heather. Hey, I'm Lawrence. Hey, I'm Tommy Mack. Hey, I'm Kevin. Hey, I'm Michael. Hey, I'm, you know, uh, I, I, I want to meet you guys when, when we're there. When they're standoffish, if they try, People, people love to talk about themselves. Most people love to talk about themselves or to talk about things that they enjoy. If you can't get them talking, it's going to be tough to make a sell. So you can, you can fast forward into the fact find, and then you can come back to asking them questions. But you really want to – this is not coffee. This is a hot tea. But you really want to – you want to try to build the relationship, even if they're standoffish, even if it feels like they don't want they don't want anything any, any anything you're selling or any any bit of your appointment or anybody you. Because selling bigger premiums comes down to the relationship, the value, and the way that you ask, and all those little trial closes along the way, and selling the benefits and the features. What other questions you guys got? Thanks for all the thumbs up on YouTube. Got a couple shares and on Facebook. Thank you guys. One of the fundamentals of sales is to give praise, hope, and empathy if they are standoffish. Dude, you, just, you don't have any other choice. Remember that Frank Bedker sold insurance so a guy could continue to support missionary. Yep. It's an incredible business we're in. More millionaires in the financial services and insurance industry than any other industry on planet Earth. You're in the right vehicle. Now it's time to make some dough. Now it's time to help a lot of people. Now it's time to come hang out with me at 8% Nation. If you won't do it for me, do it for you. Because I know that you're going to learn some extreme valuable things that are going to make you a part of the 8%. You're going to learn tangible, specific things that are going to elevate your game that will guarantee you you'll never be a part of the 92%. You go to 8% Nation, I'll never let you fail. You say, well, Cody, I'll never fail. That's what 92% of other people said too. You never know. Dude, I can fail. If, if, I, don't, if, I, don't, if I don't continue to try to improve every single day, if I don't continue to try to push, if I don't continue to challenge myself and try to be better, if I don't continue to overcome fears, dude, throwing an event with Grant Cardona, Ray Lewis at an NFL stadium, that's a major fear of mine. Before long, in about 67 days, I will have overcame that fear. There's fears in your life that you got to overcome. Failure is not an option, baby. No doubt about it. Do it. because you don't think you can. I will show agents how to sell 100% over the phone at a high volume at 8% Nation. Vince Spomp, dude, I know you will, brother. Vince of North Star. 
He's a diamond sponsor and keynote speaker at the Apricot Nation event. And I'm telling you what, I'm excited for his for his speech. You guys say, well, dude, why would I attend? What am I going to learn? You're going to learn how to drive more revenue. You're going to learn how to sell over the phone. You're going to learn how to be more proficient at prospecting. You're going to learn how to be a profitable prospector. You're going to learn how to get, you're going to learn from me, especially how to get every prospect to a yes, no matter what. The only reason I get sales that other people don't, the same sales that you get, the people say, Hey, I'm, I want to think about it. I'm not sure. I don't think I can do it. I, I want to talk to my wife, you know, call me back next week. The same people that tell you guys that stuff, it doesn't work on me. What's up, Scott? I don't let it work on me. That's the difference because I'm more sold on making the sell and helping that customer and, and getting them covered. I'm more sold on that than they are on not buying. And when that happens, your closing rate skyrockets. You, you, you don't walk out without sales. And if you do walk out with a sale, there's no reason to follow up anyway because that thing is dead. What's up, brother? Do it because you don't think you can. All right, what other questions you guys got? You can tell I'm got a uh, sinus cold hanging out with you guys, drinking a citrus defender hot tea from Starbucks, answering questions, getting you guys jacked up about 8% nation. If you're on Facebook, please share this thing out. If you're on YouTube, keep the thumbs up coming, comments and questions. What else you guys got for me? On live Q&A, we'll be going almost 40 minutes, man. It flies. When we get on video, we start doing live Q&A, this thing flies. Any suggestions for new agents who have no sales experience? Um, yes. Number one. Engross yourself in books, audio books, and everything related to sales. Number two, Heather, I'm going to make you a special offer if you're a new agent, which it sounds like you are. Go buy your ticket to 8% Nation, which you're probably going to do at some point in the future anyway, and I'll give you a free coaching session this week. Any new personally invest in helping you grow by giving you a free session. Find a mentor. Dude, you got you, you to find a mentor. The One of the best books that I ever read was The Art of Closing the Sale by Brian Tracy. That book changed my life. I was 19 and I was I was struggling, man. Uh, just because I made 117K in eight months doesn't mean that when I was part-time, I wasn't new. What's up, Austin? Just like, just like Heather, man, I didn't have any sales experience. I didn't have any insurance experience. It was a, uh, it was a tough sled. That's another awesome book. How I raised myself from failure to success through selling by Frank Bedker. Really, really, really good book. It's, it's an old one, but it's a really, really, really good book. I love that book. Um, the art of closing the sale by Brian Tracy. Um, that's the big thing is you've got to have a Heather. What product do you sell? Let me know on Facebook real quick. What product do you sell? Life, file expense, Medicare. I've worked on file expense for about seven months now. I learned a lot from your videos, but I also learned is that the more time I'm in the field, the better I get overcoming objections. Completely true. Do it because you don't think you can't. The better you are. Bedker, something like that. LOL. Yeah, it's, it is. It's Bedker. FE Life. Okay, good. Perfect. Um, if it's FE, then... You need a presentation that you can walk through from point A to point B the entire step of the way that's consistent. What's up, James? Because being consistent will make all the difference in the world. The only thing with the, the thing with sales is you need to be good at asking questions. You need to be a good listener. You need to be good at asking for the business, asking for trial closes. Um, you need to be good at overcoming objections. Just don't be afraid to screw it up. Learn from it completely. You're, dude, we're, we're all going to screw it up at some point. Work in mindset, attitude, 
agreed, find someone who is winning and duplicate. Yeah, completely. Uh, there's a lot of awesome people in this business. I get people all the time that say, Hey dude, I follow your videos and, um, do Ford's videos and, you know, Justin Brock's videos and, and all these different things. All of them matter. I, there's plenty of awesome people in this business. I, there's people that are hating on some other people's videos and my videos, dude, at the end of the day, uh, there's a lot of people to learn from. I just want to be one of the people that's providing good content. How do you ask for a sale? I laugh at myself daily, but I learn. Dude, me too. Consistent presentation completely. I bet Jimmy's is freaking flawless. Uh, how do you ask for a sale? I write down three options. Then I give from, from biggest to smallest. So like 20,000, 15,000, 10,000. Then, what's up, Zach? Then I an answer to Heather's question. Then I go through five benefits. All right, Miss Betty, there's five benefits that I'd like to uh, – that all my, I'd like to share with you that all my clients love about the types of policies that we sell. So is it okay if I go ahead and do that? Sure. Miss Betty, the first benefit, and I'll, I'll, I'll address each one typically and get an answer to each one, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to use one as an example, uh, maybe two. Whole life. Miss Betty, it's a whole life. I explain that, Miss Betty. And then I ask her, hey, do you like that? Is that important to you? Comes with a price lock. The price is permanently locked in. It'll never change. Unlike a lot of those policies out there where the price will change every year, every five years at age 70 or age 80, this price will never go up. How awesome is that? Do you like that? Is that important to you? So I'm getting feedback after every benefit and I go through five of them. Whole life, price lock, double accident, and it can be anything, builds cash value and local agent. And then local agent, I'll spend a lot of time. Um, and the local agent, I'll say, hey, uh, you know, Miss Betty, um, one of the cool things is that you will get a today, you'll get a local agent, which is me. A lot of people love that because, you know, if you if you need to make any minor changes like your address or your phone number or your beneficiary or whatever, guess what? You call me on my cell phone or my local local office number and we immediately change it. Where, Miss Betty, if you don't have a local agent, guess what you have to do? You have to call a 1-800 number. You have to wait on hold for 40 minutes. You don't know where you're talking to the person at. And then they've got to mail you stuff and you got to sign stuff. And it's just a pain. And I'm going to remove that burden by handling all that for you and taking it all off your plate. Uh, and so, but also I go a step further on the local agent because local agents part's important. I've already went through the other four benefits. She's already told me that the other four benefits are important. And then the second part of the local agent one is, hey, Miss Betty, even more important, even more important than minor changes. When the time comes where you're no longer here and your daughter Stephanie needs 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 my help with this, rather than your daughter Stephanie doing what? Calling a 1-800 number, waiting on hold for an hour, having to get stuff notarized and claim paperwork and death certificates and have stuff meld back and forth between the company. And then a bunch of time goes on weeks and weeks go on of, of, of that, them having to do that and handle the funeral home and all the burden of all the stuff that they've got to handle, that you're no longer there. I take all that out of the equation. Families love me because they say, Hey, unfortunately my mother's no longer with us. Cody, will you help us with all this? What do they do? They pick up, they call my local cell phone number, they call my local office number. We handle it all from beginning to end. And we take that massive burden off their shoulders. Now, Miss Betty, like these other four benefits, do you agree that the local agent benefit is also extremely, extremely important? Do you like that? And I shut up till they respond. And she says, yeah, Cody, I freaking love that. And when I'm, when I'm walking through all this, I'm right beside them. If they're on the couch, I'm on, I'm on one knee or I'm sitting right beside them. I want to be in their bubble in their space. I want to take my time. And so once I get, once I get responses to all five of those, then I go and say, Hey, of these five, which one's your favorite? And if they say, I don't know, uh, I like them all. Is that an answer? It's not an answer. So what do I do? I say, well, 
like I like I do every time when someone says I don't know or they or they don't answer my question. Well, if you had to choose, if you had to pick, hypothetically, if you had to choose, what would you say? Would it be the whole life, the price lock, the local agent? Which 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 one is the best? Well, they say, well, I don't know. It's probably the price lock or the local agent. Okay, great. Of those two, which do you feel like is the ultimate lead, probably the most important to you? I asked the same question three times, but I got an answer. Once I get an answer to that question about the five, then I go to the three bet the, the three three options, and I'll say, "Hey, Miss Betty, the cool thing is these three. I'm about I'm about to show you three options, and I'm gonna let you choose one. The cool thing is all of the all, all three of these options come with all five of those benefits, including the price lock, which I know you loved, and you get me as a local agent. So. Miss Betty, do you prefer twenty thousand at one fifty a month, fifteen thousand at a, at at one ten a month, or ten thousand at seventy a month? And then I shut up, and about eighty percent of the time they picked the one in the middle. Okay, great. Let's see if we can get you approved. What's your full legal name? Everything I do is duplicatable, except for the fact that they that the prospect may want to adopt me when I'm done. But uh, I'd love to see your presentation sometime, dude. I, I need to do a full full length video on that uh, because it's a really good presentation. One of the reasons I'm in the business is because I lost my dad, who was 84 last September. I also lost my 55 year old brother 11 months prior to my dad. Lost my mom in April of 2014. My goodness, I am so sorry to hear that, Scott. You've got a why, though. You've got a story, buddy, um, and you can help make sure that a lot of people are prepared. In all those, my mom and dad had American general life. It was put through blank getting the death claim because no, there are no local agents in Upper East Tennessee. Being a local agent and caring is my biggie. Dude, thank you for doing right by other people and making sure that uh, they have you when you didn't have anyone. You're welcome, Heather. Hope that helps. That was awesome. Thank you so much. What's up, Keith? Dude. And that was the short version. That's why I generally average 70 at least because I build a relationship. Thanks for all the, the the thumbs up on YouTube. What is up? I build the relationship. I focus on building value, and you saw how I did it. I don't say dumb stuff at the beginning of the appointment. I get answers to my questions. I ask after every benefit. I get engagement and acknowledgement. I ask again to get a – because if you guys notice, what am I doing a good job of I'm getting the client used to making a decision. So when I give them three choices later on in the process, they're going to make a decision because I have, I've implanted it in them for an hour, 12 different times to make a decision. And they've learned that if I don't, if they don't make a decision, I'm going to ask a repeat question that is then going to get them to make a decision. I believe that they're going to buy more than they believe that they won't. And Vince can make the same connections on the phone. Committing. It's all about committing, man. Getting them to commit, you committing. What other questions? We've been going about 50 minutes. What other questions you guys got? Thanks, Louise. Appreciate it, buddy. Oh, Iowa, dude, I want to see you at 8% Nation. What do you guys think? Any other questions? Heather, hope that helps. Um, you get a ticket to eight percent nation and I'll dive in much, much, much deeper and give you my full presentation for free. I just drink a whole tea with you guys. What other questions you guys got? Anything else where we wrap this thing up and I go take NyQuil and go to bed early? Anything else? You guys are amazing, you know what? I always love doing this with y'all. All right. 
If there's nothing else, have an awesome night. Have an incredible week. You guys see lightning back behind me. I'm struggling with door knocks. I got some good door knock stuff for you. Uh, hey, jump in the Secure Agent Mentor group, Heather, and make sure that I touch on door knocking next week. Jimmy, go to bed. We love you. You got it, brother. Michael, thank you guys. Hey, have an incredible night. Have a killer freaking week. Never quit. Never give up. Most people, most people become a 92 percenter because they give up. Do me a favor. Never give up. Never, ever, ever get up. What's up, George? And in, in closing, do it because you don't think you can. See you guys at percent Nation. Have an awesome night and awesome week. Thank you so much for being on. Thanks, Scott. Do it because you don't think you can. See you guys. All right, YouTube. Love you guys. Thanks for being on. Have an incredible night. Give us some thumbs up and comments. See you at 8% Nation.